Hi guys, welcome to Little Wicket Railway. I'm Rob and in this video we're comparing Cadbury wagons. I'm based in Birmingham and the Cadbury factory is only a few miles down the road in Bourneville and I didn't realise until I recently stumbled across this book, Bourneville Steam and Chocolate by Mike Hitches, that they actually used to have quite a large rail network within the factory. So having found that out I thought it might be nice to try and reflect that railway history from the Cadbury factory on Little Wicket somehow, so I had a look to see what was available. And there's actually quite a lot, both Hornby and Dapple manufacture wagons with the Cadbury branding on. So. I've never bought Dapple before, as you might know, I have usually buy Hornby, but this was a good excuse to buy both a Hornby and a Dapple model and compare the two and see what the wagons were like. So let's take a look at the models. And here they are. As you can see, similar packaging with the clear front window. The Hornby probably edges it on how well protected the model is and the fancy design of the box, but no one's buying these for the boxes. Let's look at the Hornby in more detail. This is reference R6902 and it's a six plank wagon. I think they were first released a couple of years ago. They're not available direct from Hornby anymore, but you can still buy these new from a lot of places. The recommended retail price of these is $16.99, which is quite pricey for a single wagon, but you can get these for a more reasonable £12 to £13 from the big retailers. You've just seen these being pulled by an LMS loco, but they're actually from period two. So that's 1870 to 1922, so before the big four grouping. The yellow on the model is really bold, so these will definitely stand out in your layout, and there are a few nice details on the frame. Hornby have left the wagon empty with just the brown planks showing on the inside. There's a central door moulded into the side, but it's not functional, and that would probably be expecting a bit too much from this model really. This is the pristine version, but you can pay a little bit extra for a weathered version, and you might prefer this if you wanted to tone down the yellow a bit. It comes with the smaller tension lock couplings that self-center and metal wheels. The whole model weighs in at around 24 grams. The only minor fault I could find with this model was that the plastic was a bit rough on the edge, and there were four small circular indents on the floor, but that's nothing significant. It's worth noting that in the mid-70s Hornby also made a closed van model with Cadbury branding, which comes up pretty regularly on eBay. Now onto the Dapple model. This is Dapple reference 4F-040-010 and is a four-plank wagon. The recommended retail price for these is just under £11, but you can pick them up for around £8.50, which makes them quite a bit cheaper than the Hornby, and that saving will soon add up if you're buying more than a couple of these. Again, this is available in either pristine condition or weathered, and seeing as I went pristine with the Hornby wagon, I thought I'd pay a little bit extra for the weathered version for this one. Dapo will give you a bit of history on the wagon which is nice, and say that the four plank wagon was built by the Great Western Railway in the early 1900s to determine which design would make the best general purpose open wagon. 200 wagons were built, however the design was not considered a success and was superseded by the later built five plank wagon which proved more versatile. So that's a nice touch and confirms this is also a period two wagon. The Cadbury branding isn't as striking on this one, but it's well applied and comes with a few extra bits of detailing, although there's nothing printed on the frame with this one. Whereas the Hornby version was yellow all around, which for all I know was historically accurate, this wagon has colour variations on the corners where the planks are held in place, which is a nice touch. Similar to Hornby, it's got the moulded centre door, but again it's non-functioning. The most notable difference is that this model has a coal load already fixed into it. I personally like this, but I know some modelers would like the option to have an empty wagon and do their own thing. It's not removable, at least I couldn't get it to come out. The coal doesn't look super realistic, but it's passable. However, and I'm not sure whether this is specific to my model, but the coal load wasn't fully inserted and it goes flat at the end, and that's really the only fault I could find with this model. Similar to Hornby, it comes with a version of the smaller tension lock coupling, which have a way of self-centering. 
Although I tried to do a bit of shunting with these and it could be a real struggle to get the couplings to align and connect. Just like the Hornby model, it has metal wheels and the whole model weighs in at around 29 grams, slightly heavier than the Hornby version, despite having two fewer planks. It's worth noting that Dapple do also make a pale blue hopper wagon with Capri branding, and apparently some time ago they also produced a yellow version similar to the Hornby one we've just looked at. In terms of historical accuracy, both models seem to do a pretty good job. I could only find two good photos of the real life versions and given their age they're obviously not in colour. The Hornby version looks very similar to this. A six plank side door mineral wagon built by the Birmingham Railway Carriage and Wagon Company in 1909. Anecdotal evidence suggests that this was yellow with blue lettering and that's what Hornby have decided to go with. To me it looks like the model is a pretty good representation of the real thing. I couldn't find an example of the original four plank version. The best I could do in terms of design was this, but it's not super close. In any case, the Dapol version may or may not be a perfect recreation, but it looks authentic enough for me. So in summary, they're both really good models. Visually, they are so different that they can't really be in direct competition. And there's room for both of these on your layout. They're both really detailed and they're both historically accurate. Would I buy Dapol again? 100% yes, I think these are of comparable quality. The big difference though is that the Hornby version costs one and a half times the Dapol version and I suspect you're paying for the brand name here. If you're really desperate to buy Hornby then as with anything I suspect eventually they will turn up significantly cheaper on eBay. But for now you can't really ignore that for something that is pretty similar in quality this one's five pounds cheaper and for that reason I would definitely be buying Dapol again. When it comes to the weathering, that's personal preference. With the yellow and the blue, I really like it staying clean, so that all shines through. With the Dapple version, it's got that coal load already in it, so I think the weathering really kind of adds to that effect. If you've enjoyed this video, then please give me a like and a subscribe, and I will hopefully see you again soon.